Hello and welcome everyone to Jungle Terrain Geometry Node, in which I will show you how to make use out of this fantastic jungle terrain and create your very own using our custom geometry node. So to start off, all we need to do is firstly create a new mesh. It can either be a plane or terrain setup. It is all up to you. So I'm just going to real quick go on to the material mode and create a plane like so. I'm going to click GX, move it off to the side. And what we want, firstly, is we want to make sure that it has enough vertices because otherwise the weight painting and the vertex painting that I'm going to show you in a bit is not going to work. So we're going to go ahead and go on to edit mode. We're going to subdivide this to a quite a large amount to get a nice amount of density for this plane. And all we need to do in order to actually make use out of this jungle geometry node is simply go on to modifiers, add a new modifier, select geometry nodes, and we're going to go ahead and find ourselves the jungle base. Just like that, we're going to get ourselves a nice setup for the leaves. So we can go on to render view to see how it looks like. And there we go. In case you're having any issues with the shadows, in case you're having a bit too dark of shadows, I do recommend you going on to the render panel. And I'm using right now cycles. Within the cycles itself, we're going to scroll down until we find ourselves light paths and there is an option called transparency. Transparency will allow you to basically have a nicer bounce for the leaves, the ones that have more of a transparency. So if I were to have this something at one, you can see it darkened it up, but having this at a value of 25 seems to give you a nice value. So with that said and done, let's go over onto the modifiers and let's look over the setup itself. First things first that I want to mention is that we are using collections. And right now at the top of the scene collection, you can see that we have moss, fern, exotic leaves and leaves bundle. These are all the assets that are being used within the setup. So all of these are being used, but they're easily changeable. You can create your very own collection and basically replace whichever type of objects that you want. So at the very top, we have a seed. This will allow you to randomize the overall setup of your mesh. If you change the seed, you're going to get ourselves a new unique type of placement for the foliage and whatnot. The weight paint option will allow you to control the overall setting of density within the mesh itself. So right now it's set to one, but if we want to control it, we need to go on to from object mode to weight painting like so. And then we're going to make sure that we create ourselves a new vertex group. I'm going to go ahead and call this one density like so. Then all we need to do is just simply go click on this button over here, find the density like so. Now we can simply click and start applying the mesh. So just like that, we're going to create ourselves a new mesh. I'm just going to go out of the render view to make sure that the performance is quite all right. And we can just create ourselves a new unique type of a setup for terrain. We can hold control and remove some of that terrain as well. So for example, if we want to cross it, uh, like so, we can do so. We can just simply remove anything that we want from this area and it's going to do it just like that. I'm going to go now out of the way paint onto the object mode. Now going downwards, we have a fern, moss and the rest of the options are going to be for the bushes, for the leaf, uh, those large leaf ones over here, for the stems, for the leaf bundles and for the leaves. So to start off the fern, we have a control for the scaling. We can click and hold and just simply make them large or smaller. We can also control the scale randomness. So for example, if we want it to look more organic, we can increase this a little bit. And that's going to give you a much more organic type of a look because there will be more larger, more smaller type of fern. Afterwards, we have something for optimization as well. So viewport density and render density. This will allow you to control how much placement of the foliage there is. I really recommend you to make use out of this, especially in moss. So every category will have this. So fern, moss and the leaves uh, within the stem will have viewport density and render density. This will allow you to basically tell when you want the density to be higher or lower. So for example, if I set the viewport density to one, you can see it uh, getting lower for the foliage over here. But when rendering, we're still going to get ourselves that nice setup of 10. So for example, in something like moss, I wouldn't want to increase this to a larger amount to get more density within just the viewport whilst modeling or something of the sort. It's going to lower down the performance quite drastically. But for the rendering, if I were to increase this, it's going to give you a much more dense, luscious type of a look. 
whilst rendering it out. So that's what these controls are for. For now, though, I'm going to keep them as is and quickly talk about the other controls. We now have a max surface angle and surface angle randomizer. These are made specifically for terrain setup. If I were to have a bit of an angle in regards to this terrain, it's going to have certain slopes, which I wouldn't want my foliage to be on. I wouldn't want them to be spawning. So for example, if I go ahead and just grab a couple of these, have the proportional editing turned on and just click G Z like so. I can see that once I start increasing it, the angle over here, because of the slope, nothing is going to be spawning here. And that's exactly what we want with certain elevation within the terrain. It's going to be really handy at automatically placing the foliage in the right area. So max surface angle and surface angle randomizers will help you to kind of tweak those parameters. Moving on, we have moss. If you don't like the density, if you don't want this to be too much, I do recommend you to just simply increasing the scale a little bit for this. And that's going to give you a more luscious type of a look. And we can even go on to the render view itself to tweak those values a little bit. And I'm going to also hold shift to make sure that controls for the scale are actually easier to control. We get more precision that way. I think that's quite all right. Okay, so scale, we're done with that. Scale randomness, again, it's going to be the same as for the fern. Moving down in regards to the stems, leaf bundle and leaves. So stems will have a custom stem material set up. If I was to grab a simple uh, sphere and move it off to the side, I can show you how it looks like. So the stem will have a nice material texture over here, like so. It allow you to have a bit of texture but they're not using any UVs. If you're interested in seeing how they look like, I do recommend you going onto the shading panel like so and seeing that they're just mix of noise texture for base material, roughness and normals. You can easily control the colors using this multiply value over here. We have some controls again for the scale, scale randomness, viewport density and all of that good stuff. These are going to control basically the stems of these bushes over here. So for example, if we want them to grow out a little bit longer like so, we can easily do so. And if we want them to look more like bushes, we can do so as well. So we have full control. We also have something called mesh radius. Mesh radius, if I was to hold shift and just slightly increase it, you can see the thickness of these stems changing, giving us much nicer base for the overall stem. Then afterwards, we have leaf bundles. These leaf bundles basically are going to be placed along top of each of one of those stems, giving you a nice look for the overall setup. And just to make sure that the stem itself is just not going to look as bare and plain, we also made sure to add leaves alongside of each one of those stems. The controls will allow you to actually change the minimum and maximum count. So this will allow you to have some random value of how many leaves are going to be placed individually alongside of each stem. So if I was to make this, for example, a little bit higher up, and we can see that these um, are spawning just a couple of leaves over here. We can change this value to something like 20 and uh, 30, like so. And it's going to give us a value between 20 and 30. Afterwards, we're pretty much done in regards to the modifier itself. The geometry node is set up pretty simply for the user to have full control while it's not overwhelming anyone. Afterwards, we have ourselves terrain material. So if I was to go ahead and apply it, so going on to the material node, I'm going to go and add terrain like so. And by default, this is what you should have. Right now, for example, I also want to make sure that the scale is um, a little bit higher. So this is a seamless texture setup. You can easily just go onto the node itself like so and select this. You can just grab this entire setup, make this large and you can see the pattern actually overlapping with one another like so. The controls that we have for this terrain is actually quite simple. If we were to go on to the vertex painting for the terrain, so we can actually go on to the vertex painting and we have a couple of brushes preset for this exact terrain. So for example, if I was to select moss, we can simply start coloring this in and it's going to give us a nice type of setup. I'm going to make the brush quite a bit larger, just cover this entire setup like so in regards to this brush. So we also have something like rich soil, which will allow you to just have some nice variation, as you can see over here, within the terrain. We're going to allow ourselves to get a nice type of blend between those materials like so. And it's actually a really nice and simple way to get some nice variation within this overall terrain. 
So the other thing that we have is going to be dry soil. It's ideal for paths or more of a village type of a setup. It's going to give us a nice dry terrain. So for example, if I want to have a bit of a path going through here, I can easily do so just like that. Then afterwards, we also have an option for opacity. Opacity will allow you to basically hide some of those parts out for the terrain, giving you a really nice control for the overall shape of your own environment. So if we want to have like a nice platform, we can easily do so. And we can just control how it's going to be set up. So just like that, I can get myself a really nice and simple more rounded type of a terrain so yeah that's all there is to it in order to make use out of this setup if you do want to make use out of this in another project i will go ahead and show you how to make use out of that so here we have a brand new project i'm just going to simply go back onto the geometry node and we're going to find ourselves a sample file over here so we can simply grab this terrain we can hit Control c we can go on to a new project we can hit Control v and that's going to place everything that this uh, terrain had including all the foliage and everything we can click gx and just move it off to the side like so make sure when you're pasting in you actually have the scene collection selected otherwise if it's going to try to paste in those fern moss and exotic leaf bundle collections in a different collection and it's going to cause uh, the overall setup to break so just make sure that the collections are actually properly selected so again Burn will have burn collection, moss will have uh, moss collection, and so on. But we don't have anything in regards to the brushes that I was just using for this uh, vertex paint setup. So if we have a look at it, we have nothing like here. So what we need to do is we need to go to File, we need to go to Append, then locate the project that contains this jungle terrain, and find yourself the brush folder. Within a brush folder, you're going to find yourselves uh, something called, there you go, T, dry soil, and holding control, I'm going to select the moss, opacity, rich, and soil. So while it's holding control, I selected them all. Then we can go ahead and click append. And once we do that, we're going to have ourselves these brushes nicely set up. So we can easily control them like so. And it's going to give us a nice result. Make sure to join our Patreon today and get access to all of our geometry notes, exclusive online courses, and free material packs, as well as asset packs. Click the link in the description down below to learn more about it. And yeah, that's going to be pretty much it in regards to the setup. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Thank you so much for watching and happy modeling everyone.